This video is sponsored by Alien the Role Playing Game. To find out more, check out the links in the description, including the official Dicebreaker review. Hello and welcome back to Dicebreaker, where today we're going to be playing the Alien RPG. I am joined by the entire Dicebreaker team, but we will go through and introduce everybody, starting with the top left on my screen and wearing a funky hat. Wait, oh, that's me! <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't. Wait, I mean, you described the hat as funky, which instantly threw me off. Uh, hello, <laughs> I'm Matt Jarvis. Cool. Are we introducing our characters now? <laughs> no, I thought you were going to say, I'm the editor in chief here at Dicebreaker. Oh, well, you know. <laughs> I allow others to introduce me first. Uh, <laughs> Next up, in the top right corner of my screen, it's Alex Meehan wearing a funky jacket. Hello, I'm Alex Meehan. I'm staff writer for Dicebreaker. And wearing a funky wig, it's Alex Lennies. Hi, it's me. Is the alien gone yet? <laughs> <laughs> and just having an all-round funky time. <laughs> Johnny Chiodini. Hi, I'm coming out of the gosh darn screen. Um, and I'm very excited about this, because I mm. blooming love the alien saga. To yeah. a point. Yeah. Up well, to a most point. of it. Yeah. So yeah. this is an Emmy Award winning RPG that came out, was it this year or last year? Last year. Was? End of last year. Last year. Um, we are going to be playing, so we've only got a, a limited amount of time here, so we're just going to be doing like a, a sort of two hour session, one shot. Uh, there are two types of way that you can play the game. In this book, you can either oh look at Mr. Fancy over here with his starter set. Mr. Fancy, um, there is campaign play, which is your standard RPG. We're going to do multiple sessions. Whenever you do a one shot, you're going to play cinematic play. So we're going to be leaning towards that. We have got the pre-gen characters here from Chariots of the Gods, or something along those lines. Chariot of the Gods. There we go. Which Mr. Ooh, Fancy also has. Look at that. Um, so we're going to be playing, uh, or should I say the rest of the team, are going to be playing as the staff and crew of the USSC, no, USCSS Montero oh. commercial freighter under Wayland yutani So can everyone please now, in the same order that you were introduced by me, introduce your characters. Well, I'm Carl Ray. Oh. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a roughneck around here. The uh, wild which west. apparently also means red, Nick, <laughs> because that's <laughs> about as deep as my impressions go. Um, Whale and Utali being a British company. <laughs> the only word... Hey, the space is open to everyone, man. Uh, the only word that describes me is bitter, much like this edible straw, which I'm using in place of something Almost more space-like. <laughs> space What's more space-like than... Straw. <laughs> An <edible> straw. <laughs> it's also made from my own urine. That's what makes it a space straw. Yeah, there we go. What? There it Recycling is really important when you're on long haul <laughs> yeah. space journeys. Man! <laughs> oh! Uh, I am playing the pilot uh, of the Montero, Lee Davis. Uh, and I just. Oh! Oh! <sighs> I just need that next big hair. I need it. That's basically my character. That's oh. it, is it? That's very nuanced. <laughs> I'm an adrenaline junkie. You're an adrenaline junkie. You are. Yeah. I, I You're love always the... looking for that next big thrill. Yeah, I need that thrill. What a thrill. You might you might find your character jittering in the in the line to one of the new ride to Alton Towers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, Oblivion, right? That's the new one. Exactly. And then Lolis. What up? Um, it's me, <laughs> Lolis. I'll be playing Vanessa Miller. Um, I am the officer. I am tired of being part of a corporation and I'm saving up money to buy my own ship and get the hell out of here. Uh, my bestie is Ms. Davis over there. And apparently no one else around here likes me, so... I like you! I, <laughs> I said no one you else! Then. No one <laughs> else! <laughs> oh, okay. So there's that. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're like this, mm -hmm. you know. Speaking of corporations, Johnny Chiodini. Uh, yes. Hello. Um, my name is John J. Wilson. I will be um, the company agent from uh, Weyland-Yutani 
um, I'm here to make sure the company's interests are um, well looked after, and secondarily that uh, that you are also fine. Um, oh God, this that is... is a really good impression. It's really scaring me. <laughs> yeah. Well, I just, I, I just, I just, th- I thought it was the best way for me to tell you that Waylon Utani cares about your safety, and thereby so do I. <laughs> Goodness. <laughs> Oh, that's making my oh, skin crawl, Johnny yeah. Unini. <laughs> Planet. It is quickly thrown out of your hands as you are sprinting away from some unknown, horrible beast. Oh, no. It's black chitin carapace, a stark contrast against the frosty whites and blues of the scene around you. The small colony that has been um, growing here is in tatters. Um, and you probably quite wisely, are sprinting back to the open arms of the docking of your ship, the Montero. Um, You're probably about maybe five seconds of running away when you hear, and much to your uh, your surprise, quite a um, blood-curdling scream from such an incredibly deep-voiced and and strong-looking woman. Uh, as she is cut down by this beast and leapt on. It was one of the other crew members that you had with you uh, who was just being torn apart by whatever this thing is. Um, You can see that there is other movement around you, but you're focusing so hard on getting into the ship as soon as possible that you're not entirely sure what they are or what they're trying to do. And the welcome clang of your feet hitting against the metal bridging... um, ramp as you uh, run back up into the ship uh, you are suddenly given the horrible realization that whatever was eating your former crew member maybe isn't satisfied with just one person to munch on I'm going to open to you to tell me what you want to do but the most important thing is you can see across from you is the big red button that shuts the door. Absolutely. <laughs> you're currently in you're currently in the docking area of uh, of your ship the Montero. I'm going to slam that button without even checking to see if any of the other crew members are around. Okay, so we are uh, playing the alien system here and the way that this game works is you are going to have your core skills which are listed as your strength, your agility, your wits, and your empathy. So I'm going to ask for an agility roll here, but let's see what skill you're probably going to be using. Okay. Uh, this is probably going to be mobility, just to get there as quickly as possible. Great. So my so, agility so, so attribute ask- gives me 4d6, and my mm-hmm. mobility, which is 2, gives me another 2, giving me a pool of 6d6. So you're going to roll your entire pool of dice, which mm-hmm. are all going to be made up of d6s. Um, later down the line, you might have stress. I'm probably going to add some of that very soon. Um, <laughs> but for now, we're just going to use our base stats. Uh, so you're going to add all of those together, give them a big roll, and you succeed if you roll at least one six. Well, that's good news, because I rolled one six. Ooh. Well, there we go. If you roll any more sixes, you are able to do what is called a stunt uh, for every one that you went over, which are basically just added boons on top if you essentially crit your roll. So, Johnny, uh, would you like to describe to me what happens as... Uh, as corporate drone Wilson sprints towards the emergency shut button. Um, yeah, I'm kind of just sort of jogging in a sort of lumbering, like, Ugh, sort of way towards the button. <laughs> and then I just put on a final burst of speed and sort of just slap wildly at it and then turn around. Um, so I'm inside the ship, right? You are all inside the okay. ship. I, just, the, I turn around, top, panting, and go, ramp. Oh, you're here. Oh, ugh. Good. <laughs> is it, are any of the other crew members, a, apart from the one that just perished, uh, outside? Uh, so there were six of you in total. Um, oh. There are the four of you standing here. Uh, there is Cham, who is the other roughneck who works on loading up the cargo with uh, Matt's character, Rai. Oh. Um, and he is currently panting away with his arm just sort of like solidly planted on a, on a big cro- cargo crate that he was supposed to be carrying out today, but is instead using uh, probably holding it so that he can push it in the way of anything that comes towards him. But he's looking incredibly distraught and is not paying attention to anything around you. Okay, so he's in the ship though. He is in the ship with you. Uh, as for the, your uh, your sixth crew member, 
doesn't look like they're going to be joining you anytime soon. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, Davis is clutching at her stomach, heavily breathing. Oh, God. Oh, God. That's the wild thing. That's the wildest thing I've done yet. Oh, God, it feels so good, but... <laughs> What the hell was that thing? What? It ate. It, 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 uh, is, did our crew number have a name? <laughs> uh, Matthews. It, it was eating Matthews. What the, what's going on? I, I'm gonna. And she starts running towards the front of the the ship, presumably where the cockpit is. Yeah. So I I do have um. A little so the with with the book which is provided um, in this chariot of the gods campaign we do have like a little uh, sort of schematic of what the inside of the ship looks like so I will just flash that on screen briefly remember to do that in the edit wheels um, <laughs> but you're you're currently in um, in the, the the docking area so you're you're moving closer towards the bridge which is which is where the uh, the actual controls for the ship would be but as as for now if you if you are gonna head towards that um, you're also kind of acutely aware of the fact that although the docking bay is shutting, it's being uncomfortably slow. Um, it's it's a big, heavy door, as it needs to be for what is essentially um, the hull of the ship closing. Uh, and on the outside, it's probably about 75% closed when you hear like a <laughs> outside uh, of just like screeching whatever they are making noise and, and searching for you can put that away <laughs> can can Rai oh, so she's she's got a skill point in heavy machinery um, mm. and so like she obviously knows her way around like the machinery of this ship um, the mechanisms can I walk over and somehow adjust the speed of the, the door closing so whether there's a I don't know, like an adjustable switch somewhere, or some way of just getting it to close quicker. Yeah, you probably should. It might do a little bit of damage in the long run, but you could probably short it enough that it uh, it overheats a bit and overclocks. It either does a little bit of damage to the door, or something does a lot of damage to us. So I'm gonna <laughs> gonna get it. Well, you it can shot. certainly try them, Matt. So that is gonna be a strength heavy machinery check. All right. So I've got four in strength, and I've got one in heavy machinery. So five total. I rolled, so it's only sixes of successes. Only sixes succeed. Great news, I rolled no successes. Good. <laughs> so um, you all spot Rai just sort of run over to the to the side, right where the sort of hydraulic pistons are that are um, actually running this. Um, and he sort of rips open a panel uh, and just sort of like scanning around it with his limited knowledge, just tugs on something which sparks and just a big glaring blue light just pops in front of your face which sort of lands you back on your bum mm. um, as the, the doors continue to shut at the same speed they're probably about 95% shut now when you see something out of the corner of your eye crawl into no. the ship something very small but it's lost in the darkness in an instant um. <laughs> synchronised <laughs> go, go say, for it Matt while Rise on a Ass. She just takes out a cigarette, lights it, and it's just like, crap. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, to the to the machinery. This is before I think the thing scuttles through. She's not quite that hard boiled, um, but it's just what, yeah. What was the name of the crew member who's who's with us, who hasn't been eaten? Sorry. That is Cham. Actually, speaking of Cham, Johnny, I'm going to send you a message. Okay. Uh, on Slack. Mm. Uh, because you have you have uh, obviously the ear of the corporation itself. Yeah. Um, and they have given you quite a, an important request. Good. Oh, I wonder what that could mm. be. Corporations mm. in the alien universe, they are, you know they always check out. They're always above. Yeah. You know they, they're always, they're always concerned with the safety yeah. of oh. their staff mm. first and foremost. Yeah. So, okay, are we we're in the docking bay right now? Yeah, so this is essentially where your cargo is. So this is a cargo hauler. It's a commercial freighter. Um, it's basically uh, it's basically like a space truck um, okay. or a space lorry that you're sending cargo from colony to colony with. You are supposed to unload this on a on a planet that you haven't yet reached, but it is corporate protocol, as you know, to investigate any distress signals that um, that you come across 
in the um, on the journey. And, and we've all happened. seen this creature that's come in. Yeah, if you um, if you want to make me a roll um, for sort of observation, uh, which would be let me just check. Observation is a wits mm-hmm. roll. Um, you can try and get a try and actually notice a bit more about it before it disappears into the darkness. But you all saw something scuttering okay. in just as the doors were closing. I'll do that. So I get. We all making this roll. I get two for wits and two for observation. Is that right? If it says two beside each one. That's if that's what's on your character sheet. Then you're going to add them together and roll all four. And it's it's only a success if I get a six. Yes. Okay. No, no success. Yeah, so you, you tried to make out what this thing was, but in the the sheer panic of the moment, it was difficult to to even focus on one thing happening at once. Okay. Uh-huh. So, um, so Matt, sorry, what's your character called again? Rye. Kayla Rye, Rye. which I'm pretty sure I said um, wrong during the intro because I was too focused on trying to do the accent, but it's Kayla Rye. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, so I saw Rye failed. I'm really sorry. To... Someone's knocking at my door. This happens every time, doesn't it? Yep. <laughs> Somebody's ringing the bell. So I saw Rai, like, failing to close the door, to try mm-hmm. and force it closed. The door and is now shut. Um, it's like, now shut, okay, yeah. but not before the little whatever it was. The little critter. The little <laughs> a, little, a little critter came through, and we all saw that something came through. Yeah, something. It was probably about the size of, like, a, a backpack. Okay. But obviously, decidedly smaller than the creature that was outside. Earlier. Oh, the whatever that large, very like dark black carapace thing was, that doesn't appear to have gone in. Okay, uh, then I think uh, Davis is going to just run towards the cockpit where the controls are and just start like preparing the ship to to launch. Do we have okay. weapons? Um, not on you. You weren't expecting what you saw, but uh, there's we're probably in weapons in the ship somewhere. We should always have weapons. <laughs> I mean, if anyone's got... You, you were going to weapon. a very calm colony on a on a standard delivery mission. You weren't really... Uh, you're not You're not Marines. You're not really loaded up okay. for this stuff. I'd like to... I'd like to... I, I'm assuming I know where on the ship there are weapons as, as, as the as the captain of the of the ship. Yeah, so you would know... I mean, you know that they're not close, but there is like a sort of emergency uh, sort of like locker that should have at least some kind of weaponry. Okay, in there. I'd like to kind of uh, say to Davis, let's just get the hell out of here. And then say to the others, let's stick together and let's get ourselves some weapons. Because something got into the ship. Uh, I- indeed. I-, I believe we all saw it. And I would, I think it would be prudent if we left the cargo bay and if Rai could lock it behind us so it can't get through. That would be prudent. Okay, Rai <laughs> just takes like a long drag, looks at Wilson, it's like, I'm not doing anything you ask me to, and looks at the captain. It's like, Captain? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. Uh, okay, uh, Cham, Cham speaks up after finally... <clears throat> getting his breath back uh, and says look 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 let's let's all just calm down I'll 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 shut the doors okay look we, we need to stop talking about stuff and, and just get out of here if there's something in here we don't want to be in here with it but, 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 all right but Miller's Miller's correct we should we should stay together da- we're, we're, Davis. we're stronger together Davis <laughs> oh, oh, <God>. gone. <laughs> Davis loudly over over Wilson is like uh no more talking talking what's that no more talking and she's loudly like slamming handles and like pressing buttons while presumably Wilson is carrying on with blathering around yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay so you you know the ship like the, the back of your hands like you've been in it for god knows how many months now um Sometimes in cryo sleep, but most of the time just sort of checking up on the engines and stuff like that. Uh, so you you bolt to the the closest entrance that would get you to the bridge of the ship, um, which is also the the most um, straightforward way to get to that locker that you're searching for, uh, Miller. Um, and as you you head over to the doors, um, you 
swipe through your cards to, to open them up to get into the actual main meat of the ship. Um, and as the doors sort of slice open, you hear scuttering behind you. I turn around. What was that? Uh, you can see it. It's it's quick, and it's like a blur. It's moving from space to space. But now that the the main door of the hull has shut, you've just got the sort of quite faint lights of the uh, of the actual cargo bay itself, and it's difficult to see amongst the sort of shadowy, not very safe working conditions. Um, the there's not really um, much that you can sort of ascertain of details of it, but you know that it's it's about that size that I said, about a sort of backpack shape. It's got multiple legs, and it's scuttling around on the floor, sort of darting around. But it seems to be headed towards you. You're right by the doors to, to exit the cargo bay. And the doors are open. Is there any, like, pipes, anything lying around that can be used as a weapon? Like, I've literally got, like, a freaking jacket patch in my pocket or something. Uh, <laughs> there is, um... <laughs> there's probably, like, some some metal piping on the wall that you could rip off that isn't, you know, as sturdily placed on there. But that would be a roll in of itself, and time is of the essence here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna rip it off the wall. My <laughs> poor shit. Okay. <laughs> uh, let's call this. Um, this is definitely gonna be strength. <laughs> but let's call this a. Um, let's just call this a strength stamina roll because I just want you to to abuse full strength to just rip this okay, thing off. If I don't have stamina, I do, I, I'm assuming I just roll strength. You just roll okay, strength, cool. yeah. Oh, you little butt. It almost rolled onto a six and then it went, no, and it fell backwards. <laughs> no. So I didn't get it. <laughs> no, fail. Okay, so um, you all see, as you're presumably all piling through the door. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Anyone I sticking mean, around? No. I mean, yeah, Davis has, 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 like, once she's done in the, where was Cockpit, I? Cockpit, she? In the, in the, the place where I was sorting out the, the controls of the ship. The cockpit? The bridge? Oh, you haven't reached that yet. Oh. You've, yeah, you've headed no. towards it, but you haven't reached yeah, it yet. I was, yeah, I was heading towards, Davis was Okay, so, so, yeah, so Davis is already, like, halfway up the stairs yeah. at this point. You guys have a chance... Those of you who aren't ripping pipes off the wall, if you want to run through the door, then just, just yeah, think, <laughs> do it right now. Yeah, where's what's Chan doing? Uh, Chan is is right next to you. Like he's he is prepared to shut the door when needs be. Okay. Yeah, I I think I'm gonna leg it through the door and get ready at the same time to to shut the door. Um, just be like Miller, come on. And uh, and Rai, you sprinting for his all? Uh, I think I. Watch the captain with a bit of kind of almost detached uh, amusement for a second, just like what are you doing essentially, and then walk through the door that Wilson is by, shoot the dirtiest look possible straight into Wilson's eyes, <laughs> and keep moving. Um, so you all watch uh, from the opposite side of the door, like trained on, on the buttons that, that shut them, the emergency uh, shut valves, uh, and you you just watch uh, your captain and Officer Miller just desperately trying to rip this pipe off of the wall, uh, and to your surprise half of it comes like detached um, but the other, other half of it is, is proving a lot more difficult and hot steam is pouring out of the, the new sort of hole that's been made uh, and funneling uh, into the room that's when you catch your first proper glimpse of this creature. Uh, it is pale and sickly coloured, um, and it seems to have about eight scuttly, spidery-like legs and a long prehensile tail that it uses to leap up towards the captain, um, almost not realising that that hot steam uh, is going to, uh, you know, go straight into it as, it, as soon as it leaps. And as it sort of reaches halfway through, and as its its legs are just attempting to, to clamp down onto the face of the captain, uh, the hot steam hits it, 
and sort of pushes it off kilter. And Miller, you feel its legs just sort of like tip over your shoulder and you get a horrible sort of shudder down your body as it as it like is right next to your face. You see this disgusting like alien mouth on the underside of its body. Um, but it falls backwards into the room with the other group. Uh, and after one more final leap, clamps down onto the head of Cham. <gasps> oh no, that's not good. Cham screams. Um, and it, his scream is, is very, very quickly muted as something seems to thor- force itself into his mouth. And you just hear him go, ah! Um, meanwhile, the, the long, um, spindly tail wraps itself around like a fire hose, uh, around the neck of Cham and starts tightening. Um, and you see him just sort of collapse, sort of grappling, grappling, grappling? Grappling with it and trying to grab at the legs and pull them off, but the, the strength that this thing has, it's barely moving with each tug that he pulls, and he's falling down onto the stairs. Could I try and get to the group? And then get, and then be like... You're literally like half a foot away from them. You're just on the other side of oh, the door. But, and Chan is with them? Yes. <laughs> at the foot of these stairs. Everyone apart from Davis. Okay. Well, I'd like to join the group, and then I'd like to, like, check it with Riot that he can close the door. Because there's a door there, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Are you able to close the door? Oh, you, me? Yes, you! Oh, <laughs> Sorry, I thought Wilson was next to the door. Uh, Rai, she, yeah, she closes the door once you're through. Uh, no, no, no. Somebody help him! Oh. Oh, we're helping him, okay. Um. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're our captain. Why wouldn't you? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to try and prize this thing off Cham's face. Okay, uh, that is going to be um, same rule as ladies. So that's uh, strength and um, what was it called again? Stamina. Um, I've got no stamina, so it's just two d6. Huff, mm-hmm. Huffing and puffing <laughs> while you're doing it. No successes. It, 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 uh. Just kind of like, uh, um, not really sure how to get in there. Poking at it with a biro. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, you, you're literally, like, trying to, to, to find some kind of hold on it, but the legs now have, like, clamped together to, to solidify its sort of strong position. Uh, and you try to sort of, like, push your hands through the slots between each leg, and you get a feel of, like, the horrible, slimy carapace that this thing is made of. Uh, can you take a stress for me, please, Johnny? Absolutely. It's funny because <laughs> the stress die, uh, the official ones for the game, feature this little critter on the one. <laughs> what oh. could that be? Ooh, only a good thing. Um, <clears throat> can <coughs> Rai, if Rai now turns around and sees this, she's just like, Jesus H. Mercy. <laughs> and she'll stub out her current cigarette on the body of whatever this is. <laughs> Flick the butt to one side, then just light another one and take a long drag. Did it react cool. <laughs> to that at all? Or? No, it's completely unaffected by, by um, the, uh, the cigarette. I think at this bit, at this point, Davis has reached the cockpit and she is like, yeah, once again, flipping switches. Are you activating the ship itself? Yeah, no, she is getting ready to to fly. Okay, can you can you please roll me, uh, as you can probably expect, your piloting skill, okay. um, which will be uh, agility piloting. Agility piloting. I have three in pilot, and what's the other thing? Sorry. Uh, agility. Agility. Oh gosh, I do not have enough uh, d6s. I'm going to roll my agility first, and then I'll roll my piloting. I will just remind you, so I, I did um, tell you about it before the video, but for the benefit of those at home as well, you can push yourself in this game. Um, so if you really want something to, to go well, um, after you've made your initial roll, regardless of whether or not you hit any successes, you can roll anything that isn't a six to get an attempt uh, some more, or even just your first, if something's really important. You will take a stress, though, every time you do that. You can only do it once per roll. Okay, I rolled two sixes. Whoa! Okay. Wow. I'm good so, at piloting. Yeah, so not only did you succeed, but you also get a stunt 
Um, so you can choose one of the two in this list. You can either gain a plus one modification to a later skill roll relating to this one, or you can show off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think she's going to pick show off every time, really. Mm. Cause, you know, I'm not Davis, sure why they even gave you the other option. Yeah, get da- three Davis sixes. is going to she's going to show off any chance she get, even in the middle of peril. She she okay, cannot help so herself. Are you pulling the ship off of the planet? Yeah, she she's going to in one smooth maneuver. Uh, That's what they call you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, lift the legs of the ship up back into the ship and fire off from the surface of the planet uh, maybe do a little flip as well uh, as we as we get up to the the planet's atmosphere you get me um, so yeah you, you feel like you guys are all just sort of stood in um, a passageway here looking at the horrible thing in front of you uh, and then you feel your legs fall out from underneath you as like the, the hit of the G-force of the, the ship just blasting off of the, the planet itself. You just hear, woo! <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, it clatters you into um, the off-white, dirty sort of padded walls that are... That, for anyone who has watched the first Alien film, this, this ship that you're in, the Montero, is basically the Nostromo, but a little bit more modern. The, the computers make slightly less of a <laughs> sound. <laughs> okay, so we are we are going to flash forward, but I would like you to all um, make an agreement on what you're going to do with Chan before we do that. He's, is he, he's I dead? I want to take him to... He is breathing. You can oh. see his chest moving up and down. Um, but this thing has a, a firm grip on it. Um... There is a med lab in here, and it, it does lock, so you could technically store him in there, and watch his vitals if you wanted to, um, but it's up to you. I think Wilson's very keen to take him to the med lab, and sort of will remind everyone that he's a company asset, and and I've seen no evidence that he shouldn't be fit for work. Actually, <laughs> uh, can Rye? Rye has two points in medical aid. If we take Cham to the med bay can I perform some kind of just general uh, I guess like analysis of what what his state is and if there is any way of like if he's comatose if he's conscious if he's you know if he appears to be poisoned what might be the the case and what we might be able to do to help absolutely yeah before Rai does that are we are we saying that everyone is currently let's say we are now gathered in the what area were you in the bridge? Well, we haven't flashed forward yet. I'm just I'm just asking what well, what's yeah, everyone yeah, going to be doing in the break? This this is this is how I'm going to Davis is going to make their decision because they're going to look at Miller, the captain, and say, "What do you want to do with him?" We'll stick him in the in the medical bay. You want to put him in the medical bay, mm-hmm. yeah? Okay sure. I don't know what the hell this thing is. Well, well, we can't very well blow him out of the airlock. Hey. We can lock the medical bay, right? Like, I would probably just lock him in there and just... Medical bay does lock. Get in, uh, get him blown out of the airlock doesn't seem like a too bad a way to go. He ain't dead yet. He's, he's still a human. He's, uh, forget your company assets, Lahan. He's a human. We should do what we can to save him. I mean, he wants to save him. So. I do. So yes. I don't know what the argument there is, but sure, okay, we'll save him to the But we're not, we're not going to send him out of the airlock. That's what we're oh, not going to do. Well, at least then, Always. I suppose you could claim on the insurance, couldn't you, company man? Well, yes, I could, but that's beside the point. Always wanted to send someone out of the airlock. Uh, Rye looks <laughs> that... worse up and down. How much are you worth? Okay, well, I, 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 I don't see why I should have to answer that sort of question. It's um, clearly beside the point. Um, and uh, anyway, we're, we're, I'm not the one who's sick. Uh, Chan is. Let's just take him to the med bay. I've had enough of... <laughs> Davis is going to, like, Sorry. grab... <laughs> grab one half of, of 
tam and look to someone else to grab the other. Yeah, Rai will help out. Okay, so um, using your combined strength, you managed to, to get your crew member, um, your crewmate, sorry, back into the into the ship's main hull and into the med lab. Um, you place them on vitals, uh, like none of you are trained doctors, um, but you know enough about the sort of employee handbook that tells you how to deal with cases like this. Um, he's hooked up to a system, he seems to be breathing, it's getting normal vitals that you would expect. Um, he's breathing quite slowly, uh, his heart rate rests very slowly as well. Um, but weirdly, although he's unmoving, he does seem to be like at least semi-conscious. Um, so he can hear you if you wanted to talk to him. Um, he's lying there, the, the creature, apart from a couple of twitches every other few minutes, um, is quite clearly alive, but doesn't seem to be making any kind of movement or noise. Uh, you just see its body sort of like shudder every now and again as if it's doing something. Um, but without any proper medical knowledge, you couldn't really make too much of it out. So I'm going to hand over to Matt to do his role now. Does anyone, just before I roll, does anyone have higher medical aid than two? Because I don't actually know if I'm the best. What's your empathy? Uh, my empathy is three. Okay, so technically, yes, because I've got five in empathy and one in medical aid. I have the aid. same. <coughs> don't look over here. The only medical I know are, are those delicious, delicious pills. <laughs> I think, for what it's worth, I think Wilson would probably be quite happy delegating and just fretting mm. about this. I don't think he would be bustling forward to say that he's yeah. the most qualified. I think Rye probably wouldn't let you either, because you describe Cham as an asset, whereas Cham and Rye work together. Okay. So she'd probably barge you out of the way if you tried to step towards him. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay, I'll make this roll then. So empathy and medical aid. So, mm. uh, five in total. Come on. <laughs> That is zero successes. Um, yeah, as I said, none of you are trained doctors. It's very difficult to see what the hell this thing is attempting to do, what it is. You can't find any um, records. You, you do search the database, you can't find any records of what this thing is, uh, despite giving it as many um, descriptions into your mother as possible, um, the AI on the ship. Um, <laughs> but as you... <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, no, give the a bit of context there. <laughs> Mother with lots of uh, full stops. <laughs> um, but as you are sort of dealing with this, I think uh, Miller wanted to search for some weapons, right? Yeah, um, I'd also like to tell the... I'd like to, to lock Chan into the medical bay and tell the others to not to go in there. Okay. Uh, is, it, is, is anyone stopping Miller from enacting that, basically? Um... I have an access key card as my signature item. Do I think that would okay. give me access to the med bay if I wanted it? I think so. Yeah. Then in in that case, I don't no. have to tell anyone else that you have. That yeah, I'm not. I'm not going to protest. Okay, I'm just going to quietly shuffle out. It's for your own. I, and I kind of like make a point that it's it's for your own safety. Okay, so you you agree to to lock the doors on the med bay so that nothing can get in or out without proper access. Um, I totally do need to. <laughs> What's Cham's first name, by the way? Sorry? What's Cham's first name? Uh, Cham's first name is Lyran. Okay. I think as, yeah, as uh, Rai leaves, she's just like, catching a bit, Rai, and puts out another cigarette on the, the thing covering his face. And so kind of yeah, right. Catching a bit, Rai. And you also Rye call him Rai. <laughs> My second name is Rai. We are on first name terms and nickname <laughs> terms. We work together. So she's yeah, she's just kind of reluctantly <laughs> leaving him to well, to gestate or whatever it might be. Gestate. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> um okay, so we are gonna skip forward. We're we're gonna cut to Miller, who has um left the group to go and search where she knows there should be weapons in the emergency locker. Um and as you crack it open using the key that you were given uh when you took control of the ship it's the first time you've looked in here. It's company protocol that you shouldn't be opening it unless in case of an emergency. So even if you did check it, you would probably get some kind of dog to your wages. Um, and much to your horror, as you open it up, there is almost none of the uh, inventory that was supposed to be in this thing. Um, upon protesting she swears. Uh, to 
to Wilson, I think Wilson probably talks something about budget cuts. Uh, but there is one pistol, um, which is pretty rudimentary. It's only got about three shots in it. Uh, there is a uh, a flare that is essentially it's called a flare, but it's essentially like a some kind of technological beacon that's essentially the the same tech that you would have followed to find that distress beacon that you that you uh, investigated on the planet. And then apart from that, it's you know tins of space beans. There's not really anything in there that's going to help out. Well, I mean, space beans could help out. <laughs> you never know when space beans can, can come in handy. Well, I'll grab the, the pistol and the flare that are there. Oops. Okay, so you you all convene back uh, under Miller's orders into the uh, the central sort of eating area, uh, which is in the galley. Um, you're all sort of around. You, you're using it like a, a, a kind of meeting room. Uh, and you, you're discussing what your next step should be. Uh, and we cut to Miller as, as, uh, as she's giving you some kind of um, plan of action here. Let's go. I don't know. Um, well, we're, we were on our way somewhere else, right? When we when we stopped for that. Mm-hmm. So, let's continue to where we were going. Although we were supposed to pick up. Oh no, we have cargo already, don't we? So we can just go. Yeah, you've got your cargo. You you were only stopping here as a temporary mm-hmm. thing, because because of the company protocol. All right. Um, but there, there is there is an unidentified alien creature in your med right. lab. Right. I mean, we must have some kind of means of communicating with head office or someone. Yes, Dispatch. probably. Do you want to give them a um, go? Yeah. Uh, I think because uh, Wilson is probably the best person to get in with the, with the, with the higher-ups, I suppose. Um that I'd be like, I'd turn to Wilson and I'd say, um, could you contact what are they called? Head o- they're not called head office, are Wayland. they? <laughs> Wayland, you oh, okay, then, okay. the company. Uh, do you want to, could you uh, contact the higher ups and and get, find out what this creature is and how we can help Chan? Uh, yes, I will, I, I will meet with the company and see um, what, what they say is the best thing to, to do. All right, get on it then. Um, yeah. So we cut to uh, to Wilson, sort of using um, not the most advanced technology for communication. Uh, in the fact that it takes quite a long time for any kind of reply to, to head off. Um, but basically, what what what's the basic structure of the message that you're sending off to Wayland? Um, made contact with unidentified uh, alien life forms. Plural. I want to describe the thing that is on Cham's face and his current uh, scenario. Um, just seeing you know, I said we've got knocked in the med bay, there's a thing on his face. He seems stable. Like, please, please direct how to proceed. Okay, um, so you leave it for about an hour before you check back because you know that's usually the amount of time that it takes for information to travel at this distance. And I fancied lunch. And you fancied lunch. Uh, And you were all sort of like sat around this terminal waiting for the response. Um, And it's almost like they're intentionally ignoring your message. You know when someone leaves you on red? Like, you can tell that somebody has opened this message in headquarters but you've still not received a reply and it's been a long time and you're all just sort of like conversing and some of you are swearing about this is classic way to Utari and then Wilson has to remind you all of the company handbook and what it says on not uh, bad mouthing the company whilst you're on the job and whilst you're wearing the uniform when you hear a smash of glass probably a corridor's length away from you it could could be the could be the bridge perhaps or or the cryo chambers, or the med lab. Do we have any computers that would, like, be like with a map on it or anything that would like blink red to show us where a breach happened? Anything like that? This is not an advanced space. This this is a lorry in space. <laughs> <laughs> Davis is going to get up and and run towards the the sound of the noise. Okay. I'm get paid um, enough for is this. anyone following? Um, yeah. Um, 
Yes, I guess. So, I guess that, Miller, you communicated to us that there are basically no weapons, right? No. But you didn't communicate this to us? No. You didn't ask me about any weapons, so I haven't said anything about the weapons. Wow. wow. So I need to know basis. <laughs> okay. All right, um, in that case, I won't pick up anything as we head towards <laughs> this crashing noise, having experienced bad things on the planet below. <laughs> So you're all going as a group, mm-hmm. yeah? Yeah. Sure. Okay, so you all collectively round the corner of these off-white sort of padded corridors um, and the clanging of all your footsteps on the metal gangways uh, suddenly comes to a screeching halt when you see that, in fact, it was the med lab uh, and one of the, the thick panes of glass, glass that should not be shatterable, has been completely smashed through um, from the inside. The glass is broken all across the corridor in front of you, which means that the, the impact came from the inside of the med lab. Is there any other signs? Is there a Chan is he inside? Is there any like blood anywhere? Is You'll need to walk up to the to the breach if you want to want to peep inside. I I will go stick my face in. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, you will watch as uh, Wilson just slowly creeps forward. Um, you can. You almost sense that he's trying to look calm, but you can see the collar of his grey jacket is just quivering ever so slightly as if he's shaking. Um, and as Wilson, you, you just round the corner, you see the bed where Chan was sleeping is now empty. As you keep going forward, you just sort of peer your head through the, the crack of the glass. It's a shard, like a heavy shard of glass just falls next to you and gives you a quick jump. But as you look around... You're confused to see whatever that creature was, that horrible spider-like thing. It's been near enough torn in half and is lying dead on the floor of the med lab. Its pools of acidic blood has burnt away at the uh, the hull itself of the ship and has, has damn near opened a hole into the cargo bay beneath it. Um... I think Davis runs up to look in and see this. It's like, God damn it! Oh my, that that hole go all the way through. She steps through to the the med lab. I think she. Are you, how are you going in? Because the doors are locked and you don't have access right Did, now, so you'd have how, to crawl through the glass. Okay, so how wide is this hole? The glass. Yeah. Uh, it's wide enough to go through, but just yeah. be careful not to cut yourself. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think I think Davis is just going to go through the hole in the glass uh, uh, and take a good look at this big old acid hole that's now in, in her ship and just stand there with her hands on her hips being like, I, I can't believe it. I, I, how much is it going to cost to get this fixed? Well, well the good news is um, I want to sort of turn to... Um, to Miller and Ryan say, the thing that was um, uh, afflicting Cham seems to have been completely sorted. Uh, crisis over. <laughs> He's up and about. Um, I, obviously, I've not spoken to him personally myself, but um, <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me if he had, in fact, uh, gone back to work. As should we. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I mean, is he lying there? No, no the bed's empty. Chan is oh. not in the room. Chan's not in the room. Okay. Uh, I. Th- uh, that's that's what happens. On, that me... was that's what Miller does. I think. Okay. Uh, Ra would start calling out. Be like, Ra, where are you at? You're here. <laughs> <laughs> I... La, you yeah, sorry. fool. Oh, <sighs> yes, yes, we should find Chan. Good idea. Do they call you an asset to the company as well? Uh, no, they call me Wilson. Um, <laughs> I, I'd la- I think we need to proceed with caution from this point on. Um, I am sorry to say there were no weapons in the weapon storage. The emergency weapon storage. There was mostly just cans of beans. Um, I think while I'm saying this, I'm kind of looking around. 
Is there any air ducts? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, there's vents in the ship. Yes. But yeah. they don't seem to be tampered with. I'd like to climb right. into a vent. <laughs> Why? You want to climb into a vent? Yeah. Why are you climbing into a vent? <laughs> it's this kind of leadership for the major captain. David, I do not get going... paid enough to, for this job. D Davis is standing there, again, hands on her hips, <laughs> looking up at you, attempting to climb into an air vent. <laughs> Miller! Miller, what are you doing? We have to proceed what? with caution. Whatever this is, we're in trouble here. I, what, I, I don't know. I don't know if that's... <laughs> She's like hanging Miller. from the ceiling as she's having this conversation. The acid hole. Yeah, and she's like giving everyone the that uh, that little speech like, guys, the, the important thing is that we all remain calm. <laughs> and she's like climbing into a vent at the same time. Look, the, the, thing, the thing that attacked Cham is dead. We need to make sure Cham is all right. Um, Davis, uh, it, it, you're right. You're right to be concerned about the whole... Wilson, what do you it's, think... It's good that you raised what this. What do you think killed the creature that attacked Chan? Well, hopefully Chan. Exactly. But so... That's good. Yeah, I mean, it looks like he just decided, I've had enough of this. Yes. Ripped it off. What, you think David Chan had a creature in his down his throat around his neck and he just woke up and decided, no, I've had enough of this, ripped it in half and <laughs> crashed through the window. <laughs> well, I think that's a, an awful lot of uh, what about her, but I, I don't I, I don't think we will know. I'm saying this, by the way, with my head out Cham. of the vent. <laughs> By the okay. way, um, right, right, let's go find Cham. Uh, Davis, you, you fixed the, the hole. Dave, Davis has got her hands on her head now. I'm looking at the hole in the, in the glass. Go, oh, God, the hole in the glass. I, I, this as well. I, I just can't believe my ship is being torn apart. I can't believe Cham would get up and do something like this. It, he made a hole in the floor and then made a hole in this window. I just... I, the, Technically, it belongs to the company. Mm. Uh, well, you know what? You can take that attitude and shove it right up. Right, well, I'm going to find Chad. I'm climbing through the vent. <laughs> <laughs> it, Davis is going, Miller! Miller, why are you, why are you going in the vents? I'm we have to remain stealthy at this point. <laughs> <laughs> you, you are really, you're quite big for that. I just don't think you... Excuse me. You've, you've got muscles. Uh, You're an officer. Rai will turn to us and be like, I suppose we're not going to get any compensation for this, are we? But, look, I'd, this is an unprecedented situation, and I will have to check with the company, but first it is important that we find Cham and mm. make, make sure we know what it is we're dealing with. You wouldn't want to lose an asset. But... Uh, Clearly, you you were offended by my remark, and I want to say I'm sorry that you were offended by my remark. <laughs> Nonetheless, a, a, a crew member is missing, and we ought to find him. D Davis is gonna look at Rai and go, right? You you know you know the guy. You you go and look for him with with this one. Uh, I'm gonna sort this mess out. Uh, Miller, I don't know what's gotten into her. It's pre precisely what I said two minutes ago. Yeah, but I don't take orders from you, big man. I take <laughs> orders from the captain. <laughs> Who is captain in the vent? Who I told you. I told you all to get in the vent, here. and everyone ignored me. <laughs> I I take reasonable <laughs> orders from the captain. <laughs> right. <laughs> and she and she just continues to poke at If the I've hole. learned anything in my time as captain, it's to get in the vent when things get to here. Get in the vent. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Okay, so um, whilst you've all been I'm I'm gonna say arguing. <laughs> I'm in the vent. Strategizing. <laughs> Strategizing, yeah, that's a good word for it. Um, you've noticed that the the acid which uh, appears to be pulling out of this thing has like, the hole has been growing very, very slightly larger. Like, the metal is steaming. This stuff is qu incredibly corrosive. Uh, and you're worried that it's dripping down into the, the cargo bay itself. So, which, as you know, is 
dangerously close to the bottom of the ship. Mm. So it's going through to the cargo hold. So I think I would suggest we're like, Will, La may have just gone back to work. There's this hole going down there. Either way, all signs point to the cargo hold. Company man, you coming? Yes. You walk in front. Right. Fine. Yes. This is a time for strong leadership. Uh, I lead the way to the cargo hold. Uh, Davis. Nervously. I think Davis is going to get up after examining the hole and tist, like, go tist, tist, like, you know. Uh, and then she's going to call into the vents. <laughs> Miller! Still there? I've crawled. I've been crawling this whole time. So I don't know Just how go. far where are, you, I go. where are you attempting to go, <laughs> Miller? <laughs> um, I'm going to crawl in the direction, uh, the other direction, not from where we came, but where I think that that Chan might have gone. Where where do you think Chan might have gone? <laughs> so if we came from the right, I'll crawl to the left. Okay, so you're you're heading Oh god. Okay, so you're heading back towards the back of the ship. I guess so. I can't see the ship. Okay. Uh so you're currently crawling through the vents towards the thrusters of the ship. Sure. Uh, yeah. Davis is just calling into the vents, hoping that Miller is going to hear that. Going, Miller! Where have, you, where have you got? I really don't think it's a good idea we split up, especially with you on your own in the vents. There's some poisonous gas in there. I'm fairly sure I saw it last week. <laughs> Miller! Can you see gas and <laughs> see poison? Just a floating <laughs> small cloud. Yeah. Can you see it? Just put down well, a saucer of milk again. and go away for yeah. a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Miller will come back. Uh, presumably she can't hear me. I'm assuming now. It will echo through the vents. Like, yeah. yeah I, will, I will allow you to, to shout through. Okay. You Presumably you hear me. I shall ignore it. <laughs> Okay, oh, okay, great. All right, right. well, we're, we're going to leave Miller in the vents. Yeah, I think uh, Davis is going to give up on Miller and she's going to go and follow the other two. She's going to go down to the cargo hold. I am moving, well. though. I just want to make that clear. I am moving in the vents. I'm not just <laughs> sat in the vents. Somewhere. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, so um, there's two entrances down into the, the cargo bay. There's the one that you ran up earlier uh, when the, the whole kerfuffle was coming. Uh, which is the, the sort of main stairway, which is sort of the south side of the ship. Uh, but on the west side, um, there is like a sort of an access ladder as well. So just just pick one of those entrances. Probably. Which one's quicker? Probably the stairs. We'll take the stairs. Yeah. Okay. So you, you head down the stairs into the cargo bay, and you're face to face with the door that you uh, you slammed shut earlier. Um, and you can hear some kind of movement on the other side of the, of the metal plating. Uh, I nudge Wilson forward. Go on then. All right. Yes. I'll 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 go look after your friend. You might as well earn at least four of those eight figures. Well, what about the other four? <laughs> D- Davis is chuckling. We'll see. To herself. No, I mean. Just get in. Just get in there. I'm on. Oh, fine. Twelve figures. I push the door open. I go through. Okay, so you you press the the release valve on the door, um, and everyone who is in the stairwell, please take a point of stress as you see uh, Chan, who appears to have been completely um, poured over with this acidic blood, uh, is rooting around in one of the cargo boxes with bits of his insides seemingly exposed. In the darkness, it's difficult to make out what the hell is going on with him, but you're pretty sure that his flesh has been torn open by the acid that he got splashed with. Okay, I want to slowly approach Cham. Say, um, Cham. Hello. He doesn't seem to immediately sort of notice that you're there. He's just sort of rummaging around trying to find something. I sort of... I've stuck out a hand as if to shake it. <laughs> perturbed that he's not... So, Cham, Cham. Hello. Hello, Cham. 
I want to go and tap him on the shoulder. Uh, so you you get about like a meter away. So he's 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 slap bang in the middle of the cargo bay, just sort of rummaging around one of the boxes. He seems to have like pulled it down off of the stack. Mm-hmm. You didn't hear any of the machinery being used, so you're not entirely sure how he did that. Um, uh, and you didn't hear a bang either, so it can't have fallen down. But he's rummaging around in one of these sort of like metal cargo containers, which comes up about to his waist. Uh, and just as you get about that sort of meter distance away, you keep talking, and he finally looks up. And he holds up this glass container, which seems to be uh, filled with a liquid, and inside of that liquid is some kind of uh, object that's floating. It's large, this container. Um, what, what, uh, uh, what do you have there? You seem hurt. It doesn't... You shouldn't be working in your condition. Can you make me an observation roll, please? Yes. So that that's... Be, uh, um, uh, wits, wits observation, observation is five, and then I've got two stress. Let's see how this goes. So a quick reminder before Johnny rolls. Um, so in the alien system, uh, with every point of stress, you add a stress die. Um, these dice are different colour to the original ones. They still count for your success, so they make you actually more efficient with every roll that you do. But if you ever roll a one on a stress dice, let me know, because you have gone into panic. Uh, thankfully, I have not gone into panic, and thank goodness for those stress dice, because I, that was where my only six came from. Okay, um, so as the sort of um, very sort of dim, almost twilight of this cargo bay uh, just sort of reflects off of the glass and onto Chan. Um, feel free to not pass this around to the rest of the group who haven't seen it yet, mm-hmm. but you start to see not what you would expect inside of a human. There is an almost milky white substance pouring out of him. Uh, and you see what appears to be almost metallic parts inside. Um, I just want to turn to um, to Rye and say, uh, uh, Rye? Yes. Rye, uh, yeah. Cham's a goddamn robot. <laughs> <laughs> what? What the hell are you? Uh, Rye would obviously like to walk up, or at this point, and be like, Lie, lie, what's the. And then see uh, as she gets close and be like, What the hell? Lie, what the? Uh, right, can you make a. Actually, do you know what? You can you can just make me a straight wit roll. Straight wit, okay. So I've got four wits plus one stress. Um, I rolled a success. Okay. Um, so, thankfully, you managed to overcome the fact that you have just seen not only the insides of your best friend and the crew but also the fact that they do not appear to be human. That normally would be an incredibly stressful situation for you, but you manage to hold your own, uh, and just as you're walking towards him and trying to, to hail him, he looks up from the glass vial, and he, he sees you. And he says, Rye, look what they did to me. Who, who did this to you? Turned you into a robot? Turn into a robot. I've always been an android, Rye. The, the the corporation owned me, but look what they tried to do to me. And he's sort of like gesturing to this this big glass vial. What? I don't know. What what are you talking about? Uh, he out of frustration, you, you hear him grunt as he pulls this big glass container. Up. And he smashes it on the ground in front of you. And the thick, viscous li- liquid inside just seems to seep out. And it reveals um, almost like crawled up like a dead spider. An exact replicant of that creature that you saw uh, clambering all over Chan's face. But it seems static and motionless. Look at what we've been hauling! 
Is it part of the cargo? Were, was he rummaging around in the cargo? He was rummaging around in one of the cargo boxes. Holy crap! We've been... We've been picking these up. We've been... We've been delivering them to different planets. We've been spreading this thing, whatever it is. What did it do to you? Mr. Robot. His name's still Rye. No, Chad. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Yeah, it is. And it tried to lay itself in me, uh, and he gestures to, like, an open hole in his chest. Um, and still inside, you see some kind of horrible egg-like shape has, has formed inside of the chest. Uh, but it looks sort of like a sickly grey. Like it tried to form its, itself into something, but obviously in, in this non-human body didn't have anything to, to grab for, for nutrient or, or matter or DNA. Can Rai's going to grab Wilson by the collar uh, and be like, did you know this? You referred to him as an asset. It, no. Whatever it... Th- you referred to Lai as an asset. You, do you know he was a robot? You know we were shipping these things. No, I, I didn't know any of this. I didn't know Cham was a, a, a robot. I didn't know that we were hauling these things. Um, I called him a company asset because that's what he is. It's what you are. It's what I am. We're all just assets. And uh, so is that thing that's been spilled on the floor. So I'm shocked... And I, I, I won't deny it, I'm a little bit miffed, but ultimately, it's still our job to carry these things. Um, we're all safe, relatively speaking, and that is good news, and we should just get on with it. And if, if, you, if, you, if, you, have, if you have issues with the company after that, uh, I think we can discuss it. interrupt uh, Wilson while he's going on. They're like, so what exactly would happen if one of them went on us? I'm not a robot, last time I checked. Why don't we find out? I gesture at Wilson with a little nod. No, that, <laughs> that seems like a very extreme course of action. I don't know, I, I'd much prefer the idea of shooting him out the airlock. We, you know, why not try with him instead of uh, our friend here? Because that would be murder. And because, um, alright, we may not get on. And I may think I may think you're a, a, a peon, but uh, technically I've done uh, nothing wrong. You can blabber on all you like me about how apparently you didn't know this was happening. Well, I didn't. But you are the representative of the big wigs. I'm. Th- uh, Cham pipes up suddenly, and he says, "Davis, he's probably right. You know, he probably has no idea what horrible stuff he's entangled in." Thank you. He's no, just don't. another mouthpiece. Yes. Just mm. another empty suit fulfilling their orders without any idea of what they mean. Well, steady on. I'm not. He may Why seem bumbling, but. Why do you keep stopping me from doing the airlock? Where, where is, where is your sense of, 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 of empathy? I'm a human too. And I've, I mean, I've, I much prefer the, the robot here than to you. Well, so, be that uh, as, it, as it may, I'm, I'm a human. I've got between three and five children, <laughs> and 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 it's not right. <laughs> I think it's well, fair. regardless I think it's of whether fair. you knew about this or not, we've got crates and crates, and she's looking around at the entire cargo hold of these things yes. in this ship right now. Yes, yes. they've all been inert. They're all well, still in it. Let's hope so, because if they get out, then we're all... Whatever was going to happen to our friend here will probably happen to us. Well, there's absolutely no evidence to suggest it will. And if we all stick together and, and pull the captain out of the vents, <laughs> then we can just finish the mission. And like I say, if, if you have moral quandaries about it. We can discuss them af- afterwards. Uh, Cham suddenly um, his like his expression turns. Uh-oh. 
<laughs> he, he was he was looking just sort of like shocked and horrified, but now he's becoming angry, uh, and he lifts up from the ground next to the pipe what appears to be some kind of shotgun. Um, which, if the captain were here, uh, she would know that that is uh, just one of the items that she was expecting to find in uh, the emergency supply locker. Um, and he's not pointing at anyone, but he does just rest his foot up on the, the cargo hold um, box that he's been rummaging through. And he says, finish the mission. Are you sick? Do you know where these crates have been going? No. You've seen the shipping protocols, Pilot Davis. You know that we've been taking these from Wayland yutani warehouses and dropping them off in United America Territory colonies. These are weapons of war. If these spread across the galaxy, we're all dead. Not just us. Humanity as we know it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, said earlier, this is what all the cargo is, we've been delivering this. Presumably most of the people living on those colonies are humans. I don't know what happens to people when they get inside them, but presumably, um, not this. She looks at the whatever thing it, uh, that's inside Chan's chest. I don't think what actually happened. So, actually, I'm kind of with the robot here. Not a huge fan of uh, carrying on our mission. I, I recognise when you put it like that, it does sound quite bad. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but it does. Yes. So... <laughs> Look at him, not even a butt that he can muster. <laughs> but, um, no, I've got nothing. <laughs> hey, we're finally in agreement here. Is th what about you, Ray? What do you think? Is there a furnace on the ship? Or something along those lines? Some kind of waste disposal unit? I mean, there's the, the thrusters. That's probably the closest you'd find to it. Um, Cham actually starts to look at you, Ray. Uh, and then his face turns from angry to sympathetic and sorrowful. Uh, and he's talking to the whole group, he's looking you in the eyes. And he says, I'm sorry, but I don't think these things can be killed by normal means, and I don't think that they should go anywhere. Which means that there's something that I have to do. And as you saw his foot sort of planted against the cargo crate, the, you almost just, for a split second, realise that his thigh muscle has just been tensing up, and with one shunt, he pushes it over, and the glass vials all roll out, break, and and fly towards you. And he's a big thing, so like, you you find yourself piling out of the way, um, not to the point where you would need a roll. It's it's still close enough that you wouldn't have to endanger yourself to get out of them, but as you sort of fall back you see that he's sprinting off south side of the ship towards where the engines and the thrusters are. Davis um, is going to yell. Using that as a distraction. Davis is going to yell. He's going to try and self-destruct the ship. We've got to stop him. I've, I've already had one hole in the floor. I'm not having another one. <laughs> yes, it, it appears he's going to try and nuke us in orbit. It's, 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 it's uh, frankly, it's the only way to be sure. Davis is run, running at this point uh, after, after Chan. Okay, so we're going to cut back to you guys in a minute, but we cut to the captain, <laughs> who's been uh, climbing through the vents towards the thruster. Um, and it's probably about now that you've realised that it's been getting a lot hotter the further that you've climbed through these mm -hmm. vents. Uh, and also, Miller, like, you're, not, you're not often finding yourself climbing through these things, so you wouldn't call yourself a, a local expert when it comes to, to travelling through them. Um, but you certainly feel like you're heading towards maybe like the engines, the thrusters. It's getting warmer. Okay, I'd like to poke my head out and see where I'm at. 
Okay, um, <laughs> can you give me, uh, let's just say a mobility roll. So mobility, agility. Mobility, agility, you say? Sounds like a, a snapshot from the Pokemon. Da, 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 That's a success. Just one six. Da, 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 da. Just yeah. the one? Okay. Uh, so you spot like a, a, a hatch that you, you managed to just sort of lever open with your elbow. It's, it's not been uh, screwed all that tight. As you pop it open, you just sort of lean yourself out upside down, and you realise that you're you're in what is essentially um, the sort of uh, fueling point of the engines. So this is where, when you stop off at a colony uh, station, you would just crack one of the pipes into it. There's there's a, a sort of hatch on the on the base of the room as well, which you can open up, um, which is obviously airtight, uh, and you can you can just refuel the tanks from here. Um, you can actually hear what appears to be some kind of kerfuffle happening um, off in the distance, sort of the opposite direction of the thrusters. Uh, and that's where you hear like a, a loud bang and the smashing of glass and shouting. Um, and there appears to be some kind of like heavy metallic footprints sort of running towards you. Right towards me, like in this room, or as in it, it seems to be coming from like a corridor that's past one of the doors of the entrances to this room. Okay, I'd like to carefully, like I'd like to have the pistol ready, but hidden, mm -hmm. and kind of like go out into the corridor and see if I can see or hear whereabouts in the corridor it is, like which direction it's coming okay, from. Okay, so are you are you going to try and get into the room because you're relatively far off from the from the floor here? Oh, so I'll have to ask you to do an, an yes, room. yes, I'd like to get into the room. Okay, so once again, mobility, agility, wits, and empathy. <laughs> All right. Ooh, nope. No successes. No. Um, okay, so you just sort of start to like pull yourself down, and then just as it the the door itself was shoddily put on, it seems like the whole of this vent has not been built uh, to very high standards. Um, and although you, you do manage to get yourself in a pretty strong position where you can just sort of drop down, just as you're sort of readying yourself, um, the metal just starts to creak and just snaps a bit. You lose your hold uh, and sort of collapse down onto the floor and you take a point of damage. Um, so if you just mark that you've lost one health mm -hmm. there. Um, you land right on your elbow and it jars up into your shoulder and you, know, like, you audibly yelp and go, oh god, and have to sort of like sit there just go sort of like pushing your, your your hand onto it and trying to keep it from from hurting too much um when you hear the door open um and just sort of silhouetted by the corridor light behind you the room's relatively dark the one that you're in uh you see like a, a male figure um just sort of looking over and there's like a, a pregnant pause and then you hear the voice of cham and he says, are you okay down there, Captain? Cham, you're all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Are you okay? Uh, yeah, I just I just hurt my arm a little climbing down from the vent. <laughs> Why were you in the vent, Captain? Well, I mean, we went to the, the medical bay and, and we saw the state it was in and I we weren't sure what had happened to you. So I... It doesn't matter. What, what are you doing here? I, uh, I was running from the rest of the crew. They've, they've gone a bit nuts, to be, uh, to be sure. What, what, what? I heard a loud noise. I heard crashing. It sounded like glass breaking. Are they all right? They've, they've been smashing up the cargo. I wonder if that creature had some kind of effect on them. Luckily, I managed to get away from it, but just as he's saying this, he sort of stepped through the door and shut it behind him. And then you notice him just sort of pull open a panel and engage an emergency door lock, uh, the kind that you would use if the if the ship itself had some kind of breach and you needed to make sure that everything was airtight. But it's okay. We're, we're trapped in here together, uh, but it means that they're trapped outside. Just as your eyes sort of adjust to the darkness, and now that the bright light from the corridor is gone, you notice he's holding something in his hands? Can I tell what it is? Uh, make me an observation roll. Observation wits, if you want wits. to try. Observation, okay. Nope. 
You don't forget it's... you can take a stress to re-roll all of those you dice. You can push yourself. Yeah, let's yeah. do it. Let's do it. Okay, so take a stress. Okay, I'll mark it down a second. Yeah, I got a six. Okay, so take a stress, so you will be adding that to your dice pool next. Okay. Um, but you notice the. Uh, he's holding it with both hands, which is weird because it seems to be some kind of long object. And just as he turns around, from um, from activating the emergency lock, he, he goes to hide it behind his torso. But you realize he's holding the shotgun that should have been in that locker that you uh, peered through earlier. I'd like... Wait, have I... I mean, I would assume that at this point I would have already seen his open stomach egg situation. <laughs> <laughs> so he's... So the only real light that's shining on him right now is coming from the door. Okay. So, so when he was facing it, you couldn't see his front. And as he turns away, you're just getting the sort of silhouetted part of his body, so it's difficult to see. But you definitely made out the shape and the gleam of the metal of the shotgun. Okay, I'm gonna try and not react, um, and wait to see what he does. Um, so he starts slowly walking towards you. Uh, he's under. So this is this is kind of like a sort of two-story room. Uh, the the huge sort of like fuel tanks are uh, there's about four of them, and you're just sort of like in in the middle of this room landed thankfully on like a, a higher up bit of it so as you um as you sort of like crash down there, there's almost like a sort of walkway in the middle of the room so that you can get higher up to where the middle of the fuel tanks are which is where you would put the, the, the uh, vent in he's sort of down a sort of half stairway um coming out from underneath one of the gangways in the middle of uh, on the edges of the uh, of the room itself so he's still sort of shadowed by that but he's just slowly walking towards you and you can just see him coming forward um, still hiding that shotgun behind his leg. And he says, But Captain, it's it's important to know that we have to stick together now, yeah? Because I know that they're our friends, but something's happened to them. There's something wrong with them. I'd like to say to him, How did you get away from that creature? Can you... Um, can you make me a? How, how are you saying that? Are you are you asking him as a subordinate, or are you asking him as a fellow person? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I'm asking him. Like, are you demanding the information from him, or are you just asking him because you're confused? I think I, I sound like I'm asking him, like I, I'm confused. Okay, so can you make me a manipulation empathy roll? Please? Sure diddly. Uh. <laughs> Remember to add your stress die, and if you roll a one on that stress die, you will be in panic. Okay. I've got five in empathy. Um, I got a six, and I did not roll a one on my stress die. I rolled a two. <laughs> um, he's, he's just sort of sat. Not sat, sorry. He's just sort of stood on the edge of this sort of shadowy area of the room. Uh, and you ask him that question just before he stops. And he comes to a halt. And he says, do you know what? It's a crazy story, Captain. I'd like to pull my gun and, and try and you... shoot him. <laughs> okay, so just before that happens, he um, he's just stepping forward. Uh, and you notice that he is just slowly, and you will be able to shoot before he probably gets a hold on it. He's just slowly starting to reveal the shotgun from behind his leg. Uh, and as he just takes one step into the light, suddenly the, the open, gory image of what happens happened to his face and chest is now fully visible to you. Uh, and you can see it's almost still sort of steaming away, the acidic burn across his chest. And you see the, the, the strange milky liquid pouring out of him. You see the, the weird inner workings of this uncanny valley of a human. Um, and in, in that instant you knew you were going to shoot already but in that instant you know that you were even more justified perhaps in your own uh, uh, violence against him and he says um, but I have to do a lot of explaining wouldn't I uh, and he just goes for the shotgun as if he's trying to, to pull it up to shoot you and now I want you to make a um, ooh, 
this is going to be... What's the stat to be used for shooting? One That's sec. Okay. <laughs> well, ranged combat is nestled in with agility. Yeah, ah, I imagine. There we go, then. That's... Is that what I'm doing? Yeah. Oh, sorry, yeah. I don't know how I didn't read that. It was it was on the list, and I was like, where's range? It's got close <laughs> combat. You're making a ranged combat agility roll, okay. obviously. <laughs> I got a six and no stress. Okay. You fire a shot off. And as it flies through the air, we cut to the oh! uncle, uh, who are <laughs> Whoa! who are bursting through. I'm guessing you're all chasing. Yeah. Because I know yeah. the captain mm -hmm. is. 100%. Yeah. You're bursting through the corridor that you saw him run down. Um, and thankfully behind you, you don't notice any movement. It seems whatever those uh, creatures were, they were either dead or they're not in a state where they can activate themselves. Um and as you're sort of like running down the corridor, you see that the door has been locked shut. Like there is a, a big flashing red sign on top that appears to have um, appears to have been activated from the other side. Now, as a pilot, mm -hmm. would I know a way to override this action? Um, you can certainly roll for it. It would. It probably wouldn't be piloting um, because you're more familiar with moving the ship yeah. than you are with its, with its inner sort of like crew quarters yeah uh, but I I would say that this would probably be a heavy machinery roll again okay well I've got one of those but uh, obviously if anyone else wants to, to help out then uh, what does Comtech do? Comtech is kind of like using like actual technology right so I'd guess more computers than hacking a door. Comtech is uh, programming androids, okay. mainframes, and other types of advanced technology which requires specialist knowledge. Okay, okay. that's probably uh, not going to help. My with access key card wouldn't be any good here, would it? Shall we find out? <laughs> sure. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, Davis is going to go and try to do this anyway, because she doesn't know about the access key card, so... Um, would this be wits and... Heavy machinery or strength or? Um, heavy machinery is tied to strength, so if it's heavy machinery, yeah, it's strength. Yeah, sorry, heavy machinery is your strength. Uh, are you are you trying to use the access code, but the pilot is is in the way? Is that is that what's happening? So the pilot has got there first. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, Davis is is having a go at it. Okay. So Davis, if you can make me a, a heavy machinery roll. Okay. Well, actually, let me let me just check. Are you are you trying to mess with? the actual hard-wired aspects of the door, or are you trying to mess with the, the panel which you would normally open it with? Because that would then be contact. I mean, I'm just using my knowledge of my knowledge of the ship, whatever that is, to to open this door. But like you're saying that she probably wouldn't know a way of overriding this. Not off by heart, no. But okay. You could maybe try and work it out with the knowledge that you have of how machinery works and how uh, these ships work. I think she's going to just try and do that. I don't think she's going to try and physically force it. I think she's just going to try and use what knowledge she has to try and override the action. Okay, yeah. Let's, let's give me a heavy machinery roll then, uh, which is strength. A heavy machinery, okay. So, that's plus the stress die. No, no sixes. Okay, so um, you get there first and you start slamming on things and, and desperately just searching around, like, how the hell do I open this thing? Mm. Uh, but behind you, um, and you, you don't seem to be making any headway, but behind you, you feel uh, Wilson moving up as well. Uh, and as you whip around, he seems to be pulling something out of his jacket. Davis is, like, tugging on the thing, going, come on, I'm going to fire you out of an airlock if you don't... <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna fire this whole thing out of the airlock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, can I, so I try the access card? Mm hmm. So, um, yeah, Wilson runs over, finds uh, the um, the sort of like credit card slot almost that you would use to, to swipe through the door if it was locked by the captain or, or a higher um, uh, level of official. Mm -hmm. um, none of you knew that he had access to, to these kind of things, and there's a brief moment of. Okay, thanks for telling us about that. Um, but you, as it um, swipes, although it doesn't open the door, it does seem to open some kind of um, sort of manual access panel. 
which an engineer would use in, in the case of, of uh, some kind of emergency or if there needed to be some kind of repair done on the door itself. Could Ryan now step up and, if this is a panel, use Comtech? Uh, Let's do it. Let's see what you can make of this thing. So that's obviously Comtech along with wits. wits. Okay, so I've got four wits and I've got three Comtech. Yeah, go on, Matt Jarvis. Uh, and you got your stress. And well, one remember. stress. So I'm rolling in total eight dice. Whoa. Oh my lord. Don't roll a one on your stress die. I did not roll a one on my stress die and I rolled two successes. Wow. Yeah, so that's a stunt, successes. right? Show off. Show off. <laughs> uh, so. With Comtech, you have access to these stunts. So you can only choose one of them. You can gain a plus one modification to a later skill roll relating to this one. Uh, you don't need to roll to overcome the exact same challenge in the future. You do it quickly in half the time it would normally take. You get new or unexpected information, which is the GM's choice. You hide your tracks or you show off. <laughs> I think, as much as I would love to show off, I think in this situation I would do it twice as quick because we're trying to get through okay. this door, we're pursuing someone. So I think the focus is get through the door as quickly as possible. We've already wasted time with Wilson swiping his card. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> so, um, Savage! <laughs> with, with the deft kind of... Um, uh, like completely close and uh, almost muscle memory like knowledge that Rai has of this um, these panels and the inner workings of the ship uh, almost with the deafness that you would expect her to quickly chuck her clothes on if she had to go onto the door in the morning because she wasn't ready for a parcel being delivered <laughs> she just whips this panel open uh, cracks open parts of the uh, of the machinery shoves certain um, uh buttons into the into the wall pulls down a lever and luckily the red from blinking uh, red goes to a, a cool cold blue and the door just poosh, opens itself I think uh, she she gives a look at Wilson and is like maybe you should start paying more monthly for your particular card they might step you up to even more access well it's already a platinum I'm sure I so just as the door opens um, you hear two gunshots. <gasps> Whoa! Are they both of one the same of them, color? Uh, they are not of the same color, no. One is significantly throatier than the other. Um, the first, which, which is the... Um, it's one of my favorite ways to describe gunshots. Bang! 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 <laughs> Bang. <laughs> um, yeah, the first, which is the, the, the lighter and smaller calibre shot, um, you see it, uh, for those of you who are further forward, which is probably just um, uh, at this point um, right, uh, you see it being fired from someone who appears to be prone in between the fuel tanks of, uh, of this uh, fueling room uh, from some kind of pistol, and it fires directly into the right-hand shoulder of the figure that's dead ahead of you, which, as you now closely know, um, Cham, you can you can tell that that's the the general shape of that body, even though it's quite dark in here, uh, and he sort of stood in the more shadowy portion of the room, and you see him jolt backwards as he, who appears to be still holding that shotgun from earlier, fires as well, but as he's pushed backwards, um, his intended target is missed. And uh, multiple shotgun pellets seems to pulse themselves into a fuel <gasps> tank. Can you, everyone in the room, please take oh, a stress? No. Oh, yeah. no. Yeah, that sounds fair. Um, as one of the fuel tanks uh, ruptures and a jet of fire starts pushing out, luckily in the opposite direction where you guys are, um, off into the ceiling of the room. Uh, as the room becomes incredibly hot, and suddenly you hear the emergency alarm of the ship start blaring out uh, through the ship itself. <laughs> <laughs> kind of, uh, <laughs> it's a donkey, quick! We gotta help it! <laughs> the emergency donkey alarm has been activated. Yeah, emergency donkey alarm. Davis is gonna go, oh Christ! Oh God! Look at, look at all the scorch marks! I uh, you you see Cham ahead of you desperately sort of like stumble and then duck behind 
some kind of um, sort of like rack of almost like propane canisters for cover. Um, I'd like to rush over to Miller and try and pull her onto her feet. But in like in doing so, also just say, for, for goodness sake, don't fire that thing again. It's very dangerous in here. <laughs> we'll have uh, to take. You... We'll have to take Cham alive. Can you please make me a mobility agility roll? Mobility agility. What do I roll? That's four for <laughs> agility, two for memorability, and three stress dice. Did it? Wow! I forgot the theme tune to Alien. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, that is zero successes and zero uh, ones on my stress die. Okay, so, so just flat. Nothing happens. Yeah. Uh, style roll. Okay, so um, you sprint open. Uh, you sprint over. Sorry, like th- into the room, uh, ch- like admonishing Miller for for being so careless as you run. Um, but as you get about halfway, you hear the of like the the reloading shotgun being pumped. Yeah. And suddenly you feel your body just go into shock as you're like. Oh, oh, I'm in danger, and then start running back into the corner of the room, trying to find somewhere to hide. Um, you you find, like, a sort of uh, support pillar that you just sort of, like, press your back up against so that it's in between you and the, the shotgun-wielding android. Uh, the rest of you, what are you doing right now? Um, can, I, can Davis see anything around her that she can on the uh, the wall next to you, um, although in the direction of where Cham went to run for cover, uh, there is um, some kind of like uh, you know you know when you get those extension cords that are on sort of like a coil, uh, it's like that, but it has some kind of like a, a fuel pipe attached to it, and it's hanging against the wall. It's big and it's heavy, but if you hit someone with it. It would it would do some real damage. Okay, yeah, I'm just trying to think because because Miller is on the floor right now, exposed, mm-hmm. um, and therefore and surrounded by the fuel tanks, which have already ruptured. Yes, um, is this the room with the uh, self destruction sequence? Um, it's you're not entirely sure if the ship has what you would call a self destruction. It's it's not something that you would commonly use. So if it does, it will be nestled in some kind of like digital menu somewhere. I would think uh, but, that. But you are you are one room away from the main engine itself, which if you did enough damage to, you know, would explode the okay, ship. Okay, so that's that's what I'm imagining he's attempting to do. Okay, because yeah. um, I'm trying to balance like wanting to protect Miller versus, pre- pre- you know, preventing. Not wanting you all to die. <laughs> um, I think I'm. I think she's going to turn to Rye. Uh, who I imagine she's quite solid considering her job as a. As <laughs> Matt, Matt, are you smoking in here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Raza, well, hell. I, I was gonna fire. get to it, but. <laughs> uh, I imagine she's quite big, being like someone who carries around cargo and such. Hey, she's um, strong, yeah. So she, Davis is gonna say to her, um, a point to the thing that she saw the big solid fuel line whatever it is uh, and say I reckon that do a good job of taking him down I'm gonna go and try and get Miller out of the way you maybe try and stop it comprende? Uh, first of all Rai stubs out the cigarette and flicks it on the floor um, seeing the jet of fire and then she's like I'll deal with that and nods towards the jet of fire if you can deal with that and gestures at the android okay <laughs> Davis is gonna um, I think Davis is uh, where is where is the android facing right now is he is he going up towards Miller or is he just going towards the room with the engine sorry uh, can you repeat the first part of that um Cham is he going 
Is he like stepping he's, he's, up to finish off Miller, or is he going to the end? He's, he's currently hiding behind. He's hiding. Uh, yeah, he's currently so to your left uh, and left of the fuel tanks where Miller is. Right. Um, he's hiding behind like a rack of what appear to be like propane tanks. Okay. Like like you know like long thin canisters with uh, vents on the top. Is there um, anywhere? And you can, you can hear him like pumping the shotgun. Is there anywhere that Davis could squeeze? between these racks to try and get the jump on on Chan. It, it's it's literally just like a trolley. Like it's not Oh, okay. It's it, it's not like a big sort Cause of she, um cuz she doesn't want to make a lot of noise. She wants to do this real sneaky like. Okay, would you, would you like to sneak into a into a more advantageous position? Yes. If you say that. Okay, so that would be an agility um uh mobility roll, please. Okay. I have five agility, and I have two mobility, so I'm going to roll these die first, along with my stress die and roll them all. No, I'm rolling all that. Let's just do my agility first. Okay. I rolled two sixes. Okay, but now roll your stress dice. I did. Uh, the stress die was a six. Okay, cool. So, um, you have succeeded, but you also get to pick a stunt. And your stunt choices are... Uh, you just have the two successes, right? Yep. Okay, so you can give... Um, you can get one of these stunts. You can either give one success to another player character in the same situation as you, so if somebody wanted to sneak with you, okay, um, you can gain a plus one modification to a later skill roll relating to this one, mm -hmm. so if you try and use your stealthy position to your advantage. Yeah. Uh, or you can impress someone. Oh. <laughs> I'm mooring between my character's personality and what might actually be best for the situation. That's absolutely why they put those in there. Yeah. It's like... You could get something mechanically useful, but also, like, you can look really cool, so which one do you want? <laughs> oh, the thing is, I think, because she, she's buddies with Miller, I think she would want to try, she would want to try and help her get out of the situation, but also giving a positive modifier to her next move might be a really good shout. And to be honest, that makes more sense in the context of the situation. I imagine if she does it really well and positions herself really well, She's going to be able to do her next move, like, a lot better. So I'm actually going to take that. I'm going to take the, the, um, is it modify my next similar Yeah, so, move. so the, the next thing that you do, yep. the reference is your stealthy position. You get plus one to Yeah, I'm going to do so that. So plus one dice. Okay. Okay, so Matt, were you, uh, or should I say Rai, were you going to use that opportunity to, to grab the weapon on the wall and try and smack Cham? No. Nope, okay. Because no. I think, uh... <laughs> Miller, uh, not Miller, Davis is just, she's just creeping up right, and I had gestured at solving the problem of the exploding fuel canister, which I feel like is also <laughs> pressing. Mm. It's, yeah, it's one of the issues you're doing. So, many issues. so while, because at this point there's what, three people encroaching onto Sham, so, you know, there's a good chance three or four people will be able to take out this android. Um, but it's going to be no use if we all get blown to hell immediately afterwards. So I'm going to look around for some kind of like emergency fuel stop. So I guess like a stopcock, but for fuel. Um, and and make my way toward it in order to try and then turn off the fuel lines or drain the fuel tanks or whatever it might be to stop the fire melting a hole in the ship. Uh, so you are like relatively like you're you're the closest thing the ship has to an engineer. Mm -hmm. So you know that there are um, valves that would stop fuel from coming out of the tank, uh, but the tank is full of fuel and the fuel is the thing that is on fire. So although you can stop the flaming fuel from going down the pipes, it wouldn't stop the fire from shooting out of the tank itself. Okay. But is okay. Is it is there a way for me to then basically stop that? Because it's it was a fuel canister that was hit, right? So to stop it exploding or to stop there being further damage? Or is it kind of dealt with? It will deal with itself. I'll just leave it to burn out. <laughs> it's definitely not going to deal with itself. I think uh, if you close that valve, you know that it will be good in the long run because you wouldn't have 
um, fuel that is already burning being pumped. Yeah. Into, uh, okay. That's uh, what the engine. I'll is. do that then. I'll... Um, but it's still going to be an environmental hazard for you for. Yeah. That's. I'll do that. I'll. I'll try and turn that valve so that it stops feeding through the lines. Okay, so this is going to be two rolls. Okay. So the first one is going to be a mobility agility to get to it. I love a mobility agility. Mobility agility. Um, plus two stress. So I've got mm -hmm. far, so three agility, two, two mobility, and then... Oh, wait, hold on. Uh, no, it's... Well, I'm using Doctor Who dice, which is not... It's incongruous. <laughs> and I've rolled a Dalek, which I think might be a one. Because I assume that, that would be a one. The TARDIS, I, like I would Dalek guess, is a six. Dalek bad. Tardis is that good. your stress die? It is my stress die. I was using oh, Doctor okay. Who. Um, gone into I didn't roll any other successes either, so... Thank you, Matt, because now we get to show off Panic. You're okay, welcome. So... I did it on purpose, obviously. <laughs> so, Panic. Uh, whenever you roll a one on one of your stress dice, you go into Panic. Uh, and you are now going to make a Panic roll. So, um... Where you do this is, uh, you are going to um, roll a d6, just a single d6, mm -hmm. and then add your current stress level. And I'm going to give you a table result. Oh, so I rolled a six, which I'm guessing is now a bad is... thing. My stress level was two, so I rolled an eight, or got an eight. Okay, um, tremble. You start to tremble uncontrollably. All skill rolls using agility suffer a minus two modification until your panic stops. Wow. Um, this result, this re result table. If you go, if you roll basically from one to six, then you keep it together. Um, wow. Seven up to fifteen plus is uh, is all individual options. If you go fifteen plus, you become catatonic. Oh my <laughs> gosh. Um, so, did you succeed in your action? Uh, no. <laughs> okay, so you run halfway through and then out of the corner of your eye so you're literally right out in the open now out of the corner of your eye you see Cham pull back up with the shotgun uh, aiming it towards you the the most visible thing in the room um, and you just collapse onto the floor desperately trying to get out of his, uh, his, his shot line uh, he fires off a burst which pings off the metal right next to you a, pu a pellet lands into the left of your shin um, but just one pellet and it hurts like hell but it doesn't seem to have done too much damage from what you can tell in this split second you drag yourself up by the um, the uh, the handle bar on the stairs that lead up to where Miller is and you pull yourself behind the stairway to give yourself some kind of cover and everyone who can see you can see you trembling in the corner, uh, just like your eyes are completely dilated as you're just like uh, staring around the room, like oh god, oh god, this is this is very real all of a sudden. Do I take any damage, or am I just this is just? You're going to take one point okay. of, of damage, yeah, to your health. Got it. Well, that didn't go well. <laughs> mm. Okay, Cham is now stood up behind the cover. Uh, he is about sort of waist high protected by these um, these canisters. He is now once again pumping this shotgun and readying another shell. Okay. Okay. Miller, what are you going to do? Well... <laughs> <laughs> well, so I was just thinking in sort of... I know we're not in initiative, but sort of it's, it's come back round to you and then me, so I just wanted to double check whether you had a plan of action before I did. Anything. So from where I'm sitting, can I see everything that's going on? Because I'm slightly higher than everyone. You're slightly higher, but you've also you're kind of flanked by these huge fuel mm. tanks. If you imagine like large, almost like you know bedroom-sized fuel okay. canisters, one of which is is spewing molten fire across. What? The what room. I... Um, okay. But they are sort of like they're giving you a kind of vision cone down the stairs. You can see um, uh, Rye has just pulled themselves uh, right up next to the stairwell, so you can get like a, a half view of that. You can't see. Um, Wilson, Wilson, because they've they've peeled off to the to your left, uh, and on your right you can just make out sort of like the the barrel of the shotgun that Chan appears to be pumping, but you can't see him yourself. Can can Miller see Davis at all? Um. Yeah. Where where did you run off to again? Sorry, Bean. I think I just wanted her to go into a 
imagine she's climbed on top of that trolley, but in a way as to not... Uh, if you, if uh, you've climbed on top <laughs> of the trolley, you are literally sat next to him. But yeah, this is, this I, is like, I just want to be... Imagine like a dining tray. I, yeah, <laughs> I just want to be as near to him as possible without him knowing I'm there, which... Okay, let's, let's say that one of the support beams that is holding up the gangways, you've slipped behind that and you're, you're literally like half a metre away from yeah, him. Yeah, I just want to be um, like... You're, you're almost flanking him, but he doesn't yeah, see you there. Yeah, I just want to be angled behind him, but does does Miller see me there or not? Um, Miller would have seen you cross the room. Okay. But you are now hidden from pretty much everyone. Okay. Rice. Because <laughs> <laughs> if, if she could have seen me, I would have gestured to her, but she can't see me, so... Okay. Okay. Um, right. I don't really know. Uh, um, well, I'm just worried if if she tries to get away now, she's just gonna get shot. Like, because yeah. because you're just in clear view. I don't think he's trying to shoot me though. I think he's he's trying to blow up the ship. He's shooting anyone yeah. at this point. <laughs> um. Oh, okay. Well, in that case, I. D- I don't know if this makes any sense, but I'm gonna try it anyway. Uh, I'm gonna try and shoot his rifle. You're gonna shoot the the barrel of the rifle. Yeah, because that's all I can see, shotgun. right? Okay. Yeah. I mean, if you want, it's gonna be very difficult. So I'm gonna ask you to probably. How many dice are you rolling already for range combat? Uh, range. Which is a, an agility skill. So Four. Agility range combat. And how much stress Two. have you got? Okay, so um, take two of your normal dice away. Because this is an incredibly difficult Oh my god, okay. Well, I think, like, I'm injured and I'm desperate, so I think she would just... It's it's that or climb back into the vent. (laughs) (laughs) You know when it gets dark. (laughs) And you've got your dodgy elbow at the moment. I rolled so Mm. well, but not a single six, and no ones either. Okay. Um... You fire, and it, it just pings off the wall. Um, luckily, you haven't done any damage. <laughs> uh, but you haven't managed mm-hmm. to hit him at all. Um, and now, um, Cham is just looking for the next target and is scanning around the room. You probably have, like, a split second to do something about it, Davis, before he loses another shot. You're not sure what he's aiming at. Davis is going to fling herself on top of his shoulders and just... Wrap yes. her arms around his neck. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is going to be strength close combat. Not agility, not jumping off something and wrapping her arms. She's, she's not trying to, like, strangle him. She's just trying to throw herself on top of him. Um, <laughs> she's a, why not? <laughs> no, let me explain. She is a small gangly thing. She's not trying to squeeze his neck or strangle him or anything. She's literally just trying to fling herself on top of him to provide okay, some form so of distraction. You will do absolutely no damage. No, to him, I don't want to hurt him. I just want. To okay, 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 that's fine. Um, so yeah, mobility, agility. Please. Okay, right. So I get a plus die on this as well. Yeah, because you're using your stealth right, I'm advantage. I'm gonna roll my agility first, which is five. And I'll roll my stress die at the same time. Okay, I did roll a one on my stress die. Uh, that's six. Uh, and then uh, a mobility, let me roll two. And I'll roll my extra die as well. Okay, I got three successes. Wow. And I rolled a one on my stress die. Well. Okay. <laughs> um, I imagine this is quite a stressful thing to do. So panicking is legitimately probably story-wise would make sense. So, uh, you are going to roll first of all your panic roll. So you're going to roll one d six and then add your stress level to your okay, result. That's two. At the moment. I rolled a three. Uh, plus two. And your stress level? Plus two. Okay, so, so you keep it together. Okay. You manage to keep your nerves in check, okay. barely. Um, but also, you th- fling yourself on top of uh, of Champ just oh. as he's about to take a shot, aiming at one of your crew members. Uh, you get to choose... Uh, did you say three successes? Yep. 
Okay, so you get to choose two of your stunts. Okay. Either um, for every um, sorry, give you can either give one other player character in the same situation as you a success. Yep. Uh, but nobody is in the same situation as you. Uh, so your only options are to gain a plus one modification to a later skill roll related to this one. So the fact that you are now on top of him. Yep. Uh, and you impress someone as you do it. I'll just so, do both of those then. Yeah. So please describe to me why you are so impressive. <laughs> I think you don't see where the hell she is because she's been like sort of crouching in the dark like a gremlin. But then she just goes and just like jumps, leaps at an amazing uh, sort of distance and then just like woof, like flings like herself around his neck. Uh, and she's like holding on while he's going. He's presumably, he's like, what the hell is going on? But I think it's the leap that was the impressive part. Okay. Um, so, Rai, as you're sort of like clinging onto your leg and shaking, you peek over the stairs, and almost in slow motion, <laughs> you see the pilot of the ship fling out of the darkness, uh, and you like realise an that the, the shotgun barrel was trained on you, and you're just sort of, like, gritting your teeth as, as you, like, almost in... in full panic mode instead of dodging just wait for the shot to come your way and then you see just as he's about to fire this like tangle of limbs just falls down onto the top of him uh, from some kind of hidden position and you see davis just just like clatter onto onto cham who completely taken aback just shifts his weight and once again the barrel of the shotgun completely falls off target and he explodes his um, his uh, shell of the shotgun straight into one of the other fuel tanks. Oh, come on. And fire <laughs> bursts out directly into his direction. Um, Mian, you are on top of him. Yeah. But you have a split second to react here as you see this, like, column of fire just bursting towards you. Uh, can you please roll mobility agility to see if you get out of the way and remember <laughs> yeah. that you've got plus one um, because of your latest skill check. Can you also take a stress and add it to your dice roll? Yeah. Because holy crap. Yeah. <laughs> In okay. fact, everyone take a stress. Because <laughs> <laughs> so who's a, not stressed right now? So this is plus another die. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so... So your mobility agility plus your stress, which has just had one added to it, and plus one for your earlier success. Right, I'm going to roll my agility first. This is about my stress die. Mm -hmm. so I'm just going to roll my agility, see if I get a six from that. Okay, I get one, six. I'm just going to okay. note that down. I'm going to... You're only going to need one success here, so if you can just roll your stress die and tell me if you get any panics. Yeah, okay. I'm rolling my stress die. Nope. Cool. Okay, so you, like, there is a moment where you feel, like, uh, the heat of um, just, like, a, a wave of burning air just fling past your face, and directly behind it is a jet of, of pure fire, which is just pummeling towards both of you, and you push Cham forward to shield you from the fire. Uh, and you hear a strangely robotic scream just echo across um, the fuel tank room as you just plummet down to the floor and flatten yourself as far as you can so that you're not hit by the burst. Um, and anyone who has a view on Cham, in fact, everyone has a view on Cham right now, as he falls forward into the main thoroughfare, just completely doused in fire, ro trying to stop drop and roll, but because the actual fuel itself has poured all over him, he is just melting in front of you. Um, and you see his, his body sort of contour under the fire, and you hear his like human screens become more and more robotic and metallic as some kind of internal voice box starts to melt. It just goes, and then just like sparks out as he's just left a, a heap of flames on the floor of the fuel tank room. I uh, leave the room muttering and like in irritation to myself. I'm like, oh, that's just great. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. They've killed Chap. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I leave. We've still got fire. 
Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm out. <laughs> He's out. Uh, I. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna revert. I had. A, I had. My secret mission was keep Cham safe at all costs. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gone. I'm like, no. You got no. a lot of insurance paperwork to fill out. Yeah, I'm gonna go start on the paperwork wheel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so, using your all, all your combined efforts, despite your injuries, you do everything in your power to make sure that that fuel tank leak is fixed. Uh, all kinds of um, um, like anti-fire equipment that is, is laying around the ship, and some of it doesn't work, obviously, because what does on this ship? But eventually, you manage to pull your efforts to to stable the systems and get yourself back into working order as you uh, continue your journey on autopilot towards your next destination. And over the, the course of the next few days, you have a lot of moral discussions to have about what you should do with this cargo. But at the end of the day, you survived to tell the tale. Thank you very much, everyone. Whoa! Whoa! The alien RPG. Um, what a ride. You horrible corporate drones. That was great fun. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I, you know, I, I just obviously I was playing the villain, but that was, yeah, it was, I, it's a really neat system. I like it a lot. It's cool, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> Matt Jarvis. Who's making me laugh? I missed Matt Jarvis's thing. Um, oh, there we go. <laughs> Wheel of Eternity! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that was the uh, any award winning Alien RPG which you can grab now we will have links in the description for where you can find that thank you very much to the whole Dicebreaker team for joining me on this uh, horrible horrible space adventure um, if you've enjoyed this then there is plenty more fantastic content for you to watch here on the Dicebreaker YouTube channel the channel you're already watching please hit subscribe and click the bell icon if you want to be notified every time we put a new video live it helps because um, you know that, that algorithm does sure love to to heap content into the fire mm. um, so please do uh, <laughs> like please a robot, do uh, keep like an, an eye android. on the channel exactly like an android um, and if you want some uh, some more content if the if the YouTube channel is simply not enough to quench your tabletop thirst then you can head on over to dicebreaker.com our, our lovely home where our two writers, uh, Matt Jarvis and Alex Meehan, as well as all of the fantastic contributors that, that help out with the channel, will be providing some fantastic articles for you to mm. read. Um, and there is a... You can also, sorry, oh. I was going to say, there is a review of the Alien RPG on there the There is website. a review. What? Yeah, which we will also link to in the description. Michael frustratedly writes a note. <laughs> link review um thank you very much for watching if you want to support the channel then you can head on over to dicebreaker.myshopify.com where we have all kinds of uh, beautiful merch for you including this t-shirt which i'm wearing right now and matt is wearing right now <gasps> because we always wear it on the same day um and uh yeah please click on one of the videos at the bottom of this uh, uh of this uh end screen if you want to carry on with your content journey but thank you very much for watching we'll see you in the next video and have a lovely bye day. bye, bye. bye. <laughs> In space, <laughs> no one can hear you have a lovely name. <laughs>